Hi, universal and Islamic greetings. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. Is Prophet Muhammad mentioned in the Old Testament? Yes, I believe he is. I'm going to quote you now Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18. And this is God speaking to Prophet Moses. It says, quote, And I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kinsmen or brethren. And I will put my words into his mouth and he shall tell them all that I command him. So God tells Prophet Moses here that He's going to raise up a prophet that is like Moses. Who is this prophet like Moses? Is it Prophet Muhammad as the Muslims claim or is it Prophet Jesus as the Christians claim? Let's see. Both Prophet Moses and Prophet Muhammad had natural fathers and mothers while Jesus didn't. Jesus only had a mother. Moses and Muhammad were married and had children while Jesus was not married and he did not have children. Both, the, both Moses and Muhammad were accepted by the majority of their peoples, but John chapter 1 verse 11 tells us that Jesus was rejected by the majority of his people. Both Moses and Muhammad had political power, while Jesus did not. Both Moses and Muhammad came with divine comprehensive laws, but Jesus did not. Instead, Jesus followed the law of Moses. Both Moses and Muhammad led an exodus of people. Moses, as you know, led the people out of Sinai into the Promised Land, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, led the Muslims from Mecca to Medina. Moses defeated Pharaoh, while Prophet Muhammad defeated the pagan Arabs, while Prophet Jesus did not defeat any opposition. Instead, Christians believe that Jesus was killed and murdered. Jesus uh, did not die a natural death, while Moses and Muhammad did. Uh, both Moses and Muhammad are buried, but Jesus is not buried. He was raised alive. There is no myth going around the world that Muhammad or Moses are gods. Instead, Christians claim that Jesus is God. And it is also said that Prophet Muhammad and Moses both started their prophetic mission at the age of 40, while Jesus, it is said, started at the age of 30. And also Christians believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. And this is not a claim that is said about Moses and Muhammad. So clearly you see here um, Muhammad is the prophet more like Moses rather than prophet Jesus. Peace be upon them all. There are many more examples but I think this itself is enough. So let's look at the verse a little bit closer. The part of the verse that also says God will raise up a prophet like Moses from amongst their brethren. Now people interpret this from amongst their brethren to mean from amongst the Jewish people. So they will be brothers to the Jews. In other words, they say that this prophet must be a Jew and he cannot be prophet Muhammad because he was an Arab, peace be upon him. However, the Bible actually says that this prophet to come will not be an Israelite or a Jew. Instead, he will come from outside of Israel and not from the Israelites. And I will quote to you Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10. And if you have your Bibles, open it up and read with me. It says, quote, since then no prophet has arisen in Israel like Moses whom the Lord knew face to face. So basically, since then no prophet has arisen in Israel like Moses. God tells us this. And we know Prophet Jesus did arise in Israel. Where did Prophet Muhammad arise from? Not in Israel, from Arabia. So, also if you look at the Hebrew dictionary of the Bible, the word brethren is talked about. It says it means personification of a group of tribes who were regarded as near kinsmen of the Israelites. The Israelites meaning Jews. So basically it means some kind of relative of the Israelites. It doesn't mean literally brethren or literally brothers. And we know that the Arabs are in fact related to the Jews. The Arabs are called Ishmaelites because they descend from Abraham through Ishmael and the Jews are called Israelites because they descend from Abraham through Isaac. So they are actually like brothers, or distant relatives, or like cousins, if you want to call it that. Also, the Bible says that the Israelites are indeed the brethren of the Arabs, or the Ishmaelites, in Genesis chapter 16, verse 12, and also Genesis chapter 25, verse 18. Yet the Christians still claim, after all of this evidence, that that prophet to come, like Moses, would be Jesus, the prophet mentioned in Deuteronomy 18, 18. So let's see if it could be Jesus. The Jews at Jesus' time, during his time, actually were waiting for three individual men to appear that God would send to them. According to John chapter 1 verse 25, they are, number one, the return of Elijah, number two, the promised awaited Messiah, and number three, the prophet to come into the world that would be like Moses, as we talked about in Deuteronomy chapter 13 
sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. So who are these three individuals, these men? The Bible tells us, according to Matthew chapter 11, verse 14, and Matthew chapter 17, verses 12 to 13, that John the Baptist is the return of Elijah. As to the second individual, the awaited Messiah, is Jesus, according to John chapter 4, verses 25 to 26. And with regards to the third individual, that prophet to come who is like Moses, this prophet must be Muhammad, peace be upon him. Why, you might ask? The answer is simple. Let me give you a number of reasons. Number one, we have already seen that the great similarities exist between Prophet Moses and Muhammad. Number two, Muhammad is an Arab, a descendant from Prophet Ishmael. God blessed Prophet Ishmael in Genesis chapter 21, verses 13 and verse 18. The Arabs are the brethren of the Jews. Number three, Deuteronomy 18.18 18 says that the prophet shall speak in, in God's name and shall speak God's words. The Quran, chapter 53, verses 3 to 4, says that Muhammad did just that. Another reason, number four, Deuteronomy 18, verses 21 to 22, says that that prophet's prophecies must come true if he is a true prophet. Muhammad's prophecies did come true. Let me give you one example. He prophesied that the Muslims would defeat the two superpowers of that time, the Byzantine Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. And this was fulfilled just after his lifetime. And the Muslims were actually weak at that time. Can you imagine them defeating the superpower, two superpowers, not just one? And again, another example, number five. We saw that in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10, it says that the prophet would not come from Israel or the Israelites. And Muhammad, as I've already mentioned, was from the Ishmaelites in Arabia. Number six, we saw that the Bible says that the prophet to come would not be Jesus or John the Baptist, because John was the return of Elijah, and Jesus was the awaited Messiah, while Muhammad, I believe, is that third prophet like Moses to come. And number seven, again, in fact, the Holy Quran has Jesus say that a prophet shall come after him, and his name shall be Ahmed. And Ahmed is another name for Muhammad. And regarding this issue, you can also see my other videos called Muhammad in the Bible and Paraclete. That will give you more proof. So lastly, I would like to mention to you that this prophet is Prophet Muhammad. The evidence suggests that. And the only person in the world who is most famous for the title The Prophet is Prophet Muhammad. There are more than a billion and a half people in the world today that call Prophet Muhammad The Prophet, without mentioning his name. So, therefore, it can only refer to him. So, God basically says in the Bible, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, that you must listen to that prophet. You must follow him. So, in other words, you, the Jew, the Christian, those who believe in the Bible as the word of God, you must follow Prophet Muhammad. It's, it's a command by God in your own book, your holy book, the Bible. In fact, God says in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 19, and I quote, if any man will not listen to my words which he, that prophet, speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. So God is threatening those people who will not follow the prophet Muhammad in the Bible. So it is your choice, dear Jew and dear Christian brothers. Come on home and accept Islam. Ask Allah for forgiveness and salvation and it will be yours. And you will be blessed in this life and in the hereafter. For truly, the success is only with God our Creator, Almighty Allah, the God of Jesus and the God of Muhammad. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum.